farther. I can't see. Is the baby okay? Girl's fine. Oh, this better be good. It's good. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Mm-hmm. Welcome to Cypress Woods. What do you think? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah? Yes. Not a simple Cajun boy would have this kind of life, did you? I never doubted you'd have an amazing life, Paul. But no amount of money can buy happiness. I want to show you something. you happy for the rest of your life. Paul, I adore you. I love you, but we can't marry. I, I want to live an honest life without sin. I, I want... Bo. You want Bo? Bo has moved on. He's in Paris, and Giselle tells me he's in... Paul, you know why we can't be married. Ruby, I love you more than I've loved anyone in the world. Stop it. You shouldn't have to live in that shack. You're really going to make me say it out loud? And, and, and raise Pearl in destitution? We are brother and sister. For God's sake. Half. We're only half brother and sister. That doesn't make it half right. It's not our fault. We were in love, madly in love, before we knew any of this. You can't deny that. I can't. We can't ignore the truth. Or the sin. I have a way. Separate suites. Right? We won't share a bet. We'll live side by side, but not together. Paul, you deserve a real marriage. You deserve passion in your life. We both do. I'm willing to give all of that up to be beside you always. I don't know if I'm willing to do that. I know what it's like to be in love. Passionately in love. Okay. Well, then, if either of us desires to find that ecstasy with someone else, we won't stand in each other's way. Really? However, would that work? Why don't we at least give it a chance? Let's do it for Pearl, for her future. That's dirty pool politics. Right, a, a deluxe nursery with loving childcare so you can do your painting. We'll tell the world that she's ours. I'll love her as if she is my own. I mean, Bo sure isn't lining up to do that. He doesn't know she exists. You know what he thinks happened. Well, you didn't go through with it, did you? Now you have an amazing little girl. I want to help you raise her. I wish I could just tell your father everything. We could get married and live as a real family. Isn't he handsome? He's a wonderful man, but he has another life now. I know if you met him, you would love him too. He's got this kind, gentle way about him, but he's also got this wicked sense of humor. And he always knew how to make me laugh. He lives in Paris, France. It's such a romantic place. I know, not like here. But if he were here now, it might even make this little shack seem romantic. Ruby Landry, in the flesh. Yeah, I've been in the swamp in some time, Missy. There's no phone lines out this way. Buster 
tray, huh? Get out of me. Yeah, a thousand bucks, and he said I could marry you. But I get to try the merchandise first. I had no part in that agreement. You making babies without me? Don't, 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 please, don't! No. Don't hurt her, please. Buster don't hurt babies. Buster makes babies. No. Put her down. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. Thing is, I kind of prefer the hard way. Like wrestling an alligator. April, April. Hey, you're okay, you're okay. You're never gonna have to worry, okay? You're never gonna have to worry again. Come on. Okay. You're never gonna have to worry again. Hi, Pearl. Hi, Pearl. We'll both be safe and happy here forever. Thank you, Paul. Truly, it's all so much more than we could have imagined. I should be thanking you for the company. To our wonderful life together. Are you toasting with a dessert fork? Why not? <laughs> I say we toast to our life whenever and however we can. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> well, I guess this is good night. <clears throat> hey, you you look really stunning tonight. You're not so bad yourself, mister. <laughs> <sighs> it's not our fault we feel this way. But it is a sin. We have to resist. Can I at least kiss you goodnight? On the cheek. No. I'm sorry. Good night, Ruby. I love you. I feel the same way, Paul. Let's put Mrs. Tate next to Paul. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Tate. My goodness. You really are the spitting image of your mother. Uh, she was an enchantress, you know. If you say so. Ruby, my wife. Well, she's terrified that your marriage will expose the truth that your half-brother and sister. That Paul is not her son. If you could keep the illusion alive, it would mean a great deal. Our daughter, Jean, she doesn't know. Of course. Thank you. All right, ready to go? Um, um, <clears throat> all clear. Wow. Another stunning outfit for Mrs. Ruby Tate. Uh, well, Ruby Tate can afford a lot more than Ruby Landry could. 
<sighs> Sometimes I wish I could just become someone else. Yeah, yeah if only it were that easy. <sighs> okay, uh, so remember, there's the sensitive information about my family that Jean doesn't know. Oh, about. you mean that your father and my mother had a secret fling and we're a married half brother and sister? You forgot to mention how much we genuinely care for each other. Congratulations to the happy couple. Oh, I wish you two hadn't eloped. Where's the baby? She's upstairs with the nanny. You hired a nanny to raise your daughter? Well, she's very nice and very experienced with babies. And that way, uh, Ruby can focus on, on her painting for some of the day, huh? That is so wonderful that you get to focus on your art. And I'm sure the time that you spend with Pearl is real quality time. Yes, that's exactly right. It's a good situation for all of us. If you say so. I just love spending every moment with my son and beautiful daughter when they were little. You know, Mom, uh, Ruby and I were actually hoping we could get some tips as we continue to decorate. Oh, you were, were you? Paul says you have a great eye, Mrs. Tate. Maybe after dinner we could take a walk around. Yes, that would be lovely. <laughs> I was thinking maybe pale blue. Why did you do it? Why did you marry Paul when you knew the truth? Mrs. Tate, Paul and I have always been close. It crushed us utterly when we learned the truth. How do you think it was for me? Your mother put a spell on my husband all those years ago. And now you have done the same to my son. I have cared for that boy since he was an infant and made my husband's secret my own. I don't pretend to be pregnant and lie, including my own daughter. Now Paul must raise another man's child. And I must pretend with a new baby so the family isn't a public disgrace. I promise. I won't tell us all about the true circumstances. Of course you won't. Look at all you have to lose. Deep down, I know you love Paul like your true son. And he loves you. I will never do anything to interfere with that. Paul loves Pearl. With all his heart, as if she were his own. And... I hope you will accept that and love her as much as a grown mare should. Love. Everyone needs so much of it. No wonder we're all exhausted. Good night, Ruby. It's been such a pleasure to spend the evening with you. I don't know about you, Pearl. But I can barely remember that old dresser drawer we used to call a crib. Flower delivery for my girls. <gasps> They're beautiful. Like the woman who planted them. Other people planted them for me. Well, you made this, you made this place a real home. And your loving attention to detail really shows. Thank you, honey. That's so nice. Well, that's the truth. You really are something. You know that? Oh, my God. Giselle, is that really necessary? Just trying to get a little attention around here. After all, it is my specialty. <laughs> my dear, darling twin sister, mistress of Cypress Woods, I have to admit, you haven't done too bad for a Cajun swamp girl. <laughs> Now, are we going to stand out here all day, or are you going to show me around? I, I actually have to get to work, but uh, you two ladies have fun. You, we'll take tea in the parlor. I assume this place has one. Does the swampy smell ever go away, or do you just get used to it? I'd rather live here than the Dumas Mansion any day. Bruce is as creepy as ever since marrying Daphne, by the way, but Daphne is mellowing out as she crumples into old age. 
Do you ever have anything genuinely nice to say about someone? Yes, actually. Your husband. Paul is a saint. What's it like being married to our brother so you can spend his money and live in his mansion? He is our half-brother. If you've just come here to make trouble. Well, keep your secrets, Ruby, and take to heart how grateful you are. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, one teeny tiny leak to the public and you might lose all of this. What do you want? Money. <laughs> I might not be an all in helping you keep your fancy new lifestyle. You always have to find a way to feel superior to me, don't you? The shoe fits, Rubes. <laughs> oh, you're supposed baby. Just go. So. Just told you I'm good at keeping secrets, Ruby. Calm down. Why don't you take a few hours off? She has Bo's eyes. I know. They're beautiful. Oh, so you do still have Bo on the brain after all this? I do not. That doesn't mean his baby's eyes aren't beautiful. <laughs> Whatever you say, sister. You want to? Just ruin my outfit. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Careful with my handbag. Costs more than you make in a month. Leaving so soon? Well, my sister doesn't seem too keen on playing host. Oh, I'm so sorry to see you go. Pearl's upstairs napping, but she wishes she could say goodbye. By the way, Bo broke off his engagement to his Parisian debutante. I figured you'd want to know, even though you're totally over him, he is officially single. Totally available now. He didn't get married? Nope. In fact, he's back living in... If you had just waited a little bit longer before diving into all of this, you might have still want him and had it all. Don't worry. I'll tell him all about your luxurious life, your amazing happy marriage, and your new little baby when I see him. And his eyes beautiful eyes. If you think I'm jealous of your life because of this big house and all of your money, you've got another thing coming. I've got a feeling you'll be envious of my life soon. Just you wait. Jealous. I mean, you're everything she's not. Caring, thoughtful, kind. You are a hundred times more beautiful than she'll ever be because of the goodness inside you. Pardon me, madame. Colonel William Henry Tate, at your service. <laughs> Paul, that's so funny. I'm not aware of a man by the name of Paul. I'm Colonel William Henry Tate. May I be so bold as to invite you to dinner this evening? <clears throat> it would be my pleasure to join you. I'm thrilled to hear it, madame. In fact, I have acquired a special gown for the occasion. <laughs> it's gorgeous. 
I shall relish the opportunity, Colonel. Very well. I eagerly await our rendezvous. <laughs> Paul. This is all a bit silly. Once again, madame, it's William. A toast, madame, to the return of better times, when the most important thing for a man to do is make the woman of his heart happy. Thank you, William. What are your plans for the day? Painting. Oh, wonderful. Paul, we have to talk. Thank you. Paul, I know what you're trying to do, but we violated our promises to each other last night. What do you mean? I just told you I was out quickly last night. <laughs> Did you have some kind of dream? Please, I'm sure it was just a dream. Yes, I'm sure it was just a dream. Yes? Giselle, hi. What do you want? I don't want anything, but I thought you'd like to know what's happened. Our lovely stepmother was out riding when her horse spooked and threw her off. She hit her head on a rock. It was hours before someone found her. She's dead, Ruby. Ruby, thanks for coming. Oh, it's awful. I'm devastated. Well, we sure are sorry for your loss, Bruce. That bitch locked me out of her will entirely. I'm gonna be destitute. What am I going to do? You always said you married Daphne for love, not her money. You try living without it. Sorry, Bruce. We have to find Giselle. Please. Just talk some sense into her about your mother's will. As far as I'm concerned, Giselle can handle Bruce. <laughs> I don't even... Hello, my love. Oh. Hi, Ruby. I didn't see you there. But... Isn't it wonderful to see Beau? Beau by name and by nature. Handsome as ever and all mine now. <laughs> Hi, Ruby. It's nice to see you. Hello, Bo. Paul. Paul Tate. Bo Andres. Pleasure. What are you doing here? He's been such a support through this difficult time as I recover from the death of our stepmother. After my visit to you, I met up with our beautiful Bo, and well, you might have stolen him from me once, but I think he ended up with the right Dumas girl. Right, baby? Isn't it nice to see the happy married couple, honey? And you should just see their beautiful baby girl, Pearl. Yes, uh, congratulations on your marriage. Sounds like two of you are very happy. I think I left something in the car. Oh. <clears throat> I just, um, I 
just need a moment alone. Okay. I'm sorry. I should have told you. It's okay. It's just a shock. I have to ask. How's Pearl? That's her name, right? Yes. And she's wonderful. Oh. Don't. Is she mine? I should have never listened to my mother and gone off to Europe. Can you ever forgive me for leaving you like that? Of course I forgive you. Don't hold on to that guilt. I ran off to have Pearl so you wouldn't be burdened. We've managed to make a wonderful life together. With Paul? Yes. He's a wonderful man. Well, I'm happy the two of you are so happy. And that Pearl be raised in a respectable way. Did you not have a fantastic time in Europe? It sounded like a dream. What happened with your Parisian heiress? I did meet someone. And yes, we shared a life, but I'd wake up every morning and look at my beautiful fiance and still feel empty inside. Because she wasn't you. So I broke it off with her and I moved back, fully intending to tell you my feelings. But Giselle told me you'd married Paul and had a baby, his baby. I was crushed, but I wanted you to be happy, so I stayed away. I didn't know Pearl was mine until now. You didn't want to know. And now you're with Giselle. There you are, honey. I've been looking everywhere for you. And Ruby, don't you get any ideas? You're a married woman with an important husband. We have guests. A letter for you, madame. It's from your sister. Sister, we eloped just like you and Paul did. After our honeymoon, we'll come visit and settle Daphne's estate. Gotta go. My beau's calling me back to bed. Ciao for now. Incredible place. Giselle, you really didn't do it justice. Gardens can be so much work. Well, it's our little corner of the world. Well, we love it here, don't we? How long is this going to take? As long as it takes to make sure Bruce doesn't get that money. Shouldn't be more than a few hours to settle Daphne's estate and make sure we're all on the same page. And who is this little one? Hello, darling. Come here. Hello there, Pearl. I'm Bo. Can we go inside now? The swamp smell makes me gag. <sighs> Maybe pay less attention to Ruby and more attention to Paul and his success. You might learn something. Or at the very least, butter him up to help make sure we come out of this better off. 
I don't want to give Ruby the satisfaction of getting the better end of the deal. It's time for your nap, my darling. Sweet dreams, my sweetest. so emotional when I met her. But now that I have, it's so clear. You, Pearl, and me, we should be a family. We are a family. <sighs> we are both married to other people. It's, it's too late. I can't just keep going on pretending my heart isn't exploding every time I see you. The only reason I married Giselle was for the illusion that it's you. Ruby, I've done something crazy. I've leased an apartment in the French Quarter that Giselle doesn't know about. I want you know we were meant to be together. And if fate won't let us do it properly, then we can make our own fate. Please, just think about it. Bo, where are you? I love you, Ruby. I'll run circles around you. I mean, I know you're not the brightest bulb in the chandelier, but you always surprise me with new ways of proving it. Well, it was very nice to see both of you. Thank you so much for the tour. Would love to stay for dinner, sis, but we just got a new bed, so. May I? About it. Leave some room for Jesus, you too. Get the car and drive me home now. trip. Oh, thanks, sweetie. Oh, and I was thinking I might take your advice. Maybe set up a few meetings with art dealers in New Orleans. That's terrific. I've been saying it forever. You're going to be a famous artist. Hey, let me know when. I'll come along with you and I'll make sure they don't gouge you. I'm afraid I can't live without this. This place can be just for us. Hidden away from the real world. I'm gonna have to head back soon. I hate lying to Paul, but 
We made an agreement when we got married to let each other explore real physical passion if we found it. For all I know, he's doing the same. You don't already have physical passion with your husband? Paul's father and my mother had a secret affair a long time ago. Paul is the result. Rather than face the shame, Paul's father asked his wife Gladys to raise Paul as her own. Paul is my half-brother. And we care about each other, but can never be more than platonic. This changes everything. You made an agreement. But I don't think Paul really meant it. He loves me so much. And it kills me to picture his face when I tell him the truth, but... I must. Is anyone home? Oh, honey, you scared me. Where is everyone? Where's Pearl? I give everyone the day off. I needed to quiet Pearl's napping. I know what you did. I know what you did! We had an agreement, Paul. A an agreement you suggested. I didn't think it would hurt this much. I didn't want to hurt you. That's why I didn't tell you. You had every right to do what we agreed. Please, 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 please. Don't see him again. You mean the world to me. And if you see him again, you'll leave me. I'll be alone. Please. Please, 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 please. <sighs> Hold on now. Y you and Paul had an agreement. True. But what if Giselle finds out? That is what makes this untenable. She'd seek revenge. She knows it. It has to be over. Good morning to the most amazing woman in the world. Sorry, she's gone for the day. It's just me, Ruby. What can I do to help you feel better? Name it. I'll, I'll buy it. I just need time. Okay. But if you think of anything, just call. your brother-in-law. He insisted. Sounds troubled. Hello? Ruby. Something's happened. Giselle and I, we've been up at your family's country chateau. And a few days ago, Giselle was bitten by a mosquito and she fell ill. I called the doctor to the chateau, chateau and he said the mosquito could be carrying a rare form of encephalitis and passed it to her. Oh my god. Fate? is trying to help us. 
Come to the chateau and switch places with Giselle. You look so much alike, no one will ever question it. Ruby will be the one who fell ill, and you can assume Giselle's life. With me. You can bring Pearl, and we can... All live together as a family. Bro. Oh. This is crazy, what? We're getting a second chance at first love. I've already laid some of the groundwork with the doctor here. He'll take money in exchange for silence, and if we pull the switch fast enough, none of the staff will ever know. You've really thought this through. If we're gonna do this without suspicion, you need to decide today. Living this half-life isn't working. And now fate has stepped in with Giselle's illness. That's a good idea. I'll bring Giselle here. I'll take care of her as if my wife, Ruby, got sick. I'll send Pearl off with her Aunt Giselle and Uncle Beau until her mom gets better. Can't believe you're willing to go along with this. Honestly, seeing you so miserable has made me miserable. Ashamed. We had an agreement. It was my idea. Maybe all I ever wanted to do was make you happy. I'm getting her the best care. She might even recover, you know? Or perhaps Ruby will decide to switch back. We have to switch wedding rings. It's the only piece of jewelry people will notice. If I get even an inkling that you mistreated her, I will blow this whole charade up in an instant. used to be my room when I lived here. Yeah, feels familiar. That's important these days. My gorgeous daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to your new life, Mrs. Andres. The life that was meant to be. Hi, Pauline. I'm not sure. Let me check. This is as good a time as any. Hello? Hi, Pauline. Well, it was a disaster, that's why. My sister came to visit, and she was bitten by a mosquito. She came down with this stupid, rare disease. So we had to come home, and I had to take my niece. Well, maybe you don't know everything about me, Pauline. I can be good with kids if I want to be. No, I don't have time for tennis. And to be honest, your backhand wasn't anything to boast about. She asked if we'll be at Kitty's private party at Fancy's on the weekend. Well, I think it's time to Rip the bandage off. Introduce you to society. <sighs> I'm really gonna have to get used to showing this much skin. Giselle will like to walk into a room and have every head turn her way. I'll be blushing so hard, everyone will know it's me. People just think it's Giselle's way of flirting. Plus, you look spectacular. When in doubt, be mean. Giselle, so good to see you. Cynthia. Hello. It's been too long. <gasps> For you, maybe. Oh, you never cease to amuse, Giselle. 
what I aim to please. Speaking of which, tell your husband I said hi. <laughs> Bo, I'm thirsty. Let's grab a drink. But first, I need to go to the little girl's room. I didn't know we were close to that. Well, uh, you thought wrong, I guess. <laughs> What's wrong with you, baby? Are you insane? Bo is just out there. I <laughs> thought that was part of the fun. Well, I intend to get my fun in other ways from now on. Now, I'll tell you the truth, just this once. You are no longer worth my time. So get out of my life. And by the way, that cologne is doing you no favors. Really, you? What are you doing here? How have you been? Save the niceties, Giselle. I've done just fine for myself. No thanks to you and people of your ilk. Let me get this straight based on what I've seen tonight. You somehow stole Bo, the love of your sister's life, then decided that wasn't enough and started cheating on him. Well, Abby. Maybe you should get your own business. I mean, mind your own life. I, I, I'm sorry, Abby. I... Ruby? Oh my God, Abby, is it so obvious? You can't hide your heart, Ruby. Well, why don't now? I trust you have your reasons. Your secret's safe with me. Thank you, Abby. It's really wonderful to bump into you like this. It feels so good to have someone see who I really am. Well, I'll be in New Orleans for a whole month, so you should stay in touch if you ever need someone to talk to. I'd like that, Abby. I'd like that very much. It's oh. <laughs> so good to see you. Hello? Uh, it's Paul. Ruby there? Yeah, one second. It's Paul. Paul? Ruby, how are you? I, I miss you. Um, how is Giselle? Well, I've been uh, getting her looked at by different specialists. Well, Paul, that's great. Thank you for taking such good care of her. Actually, uh, one of the specialists is a little more optimistic than Bo's country doctor was. He says she can come out of the coma. That sounds like great news. Keep us updated. That was rude, Bo. You just hung up. Well, he says he wants you to be happy. He should let you be happy. I love you. But I can't shake this feeling that something's gonna take you away from me and separate us all again. Well, my mother's returning from a trip overseas, and she expects to see Giselle and me. It's not going to be easy to face her, I, I know. Giselle wasn't fond of my mother, so you don't have to say much. So, Giselle, Bo tells me you've been watching that Cajun baby for a while, since your sister fell ill? She's not a nameless Cajun baby. Her name is Pearl. Oh, so you've really taken a shine to little Pearl, then. I didn't say that. I don't like her very much, and I wish I'd never committed to this whole anti-step-send thing, but <laughs> I'll be damned if anyone tells me I can't take care of a simple infant. Hmm. It's my own fault for being too nice. <laughs> and the father, Paul Tate, he's become very wealthy, I hear. Yes, Paul made money, yeah. a lot of it. Well, maybe the two of you will think of having your own children someday soon. I'm certainly hoping for a grandson. <laughs> Well, keep hoping, because if all children are like my sisters, I'll check myself into a nunnery before I carry a baby to term. <laughs> yep, that Cajun baby is the closest thing you'll ever have to progeny, so get used to it.
You really let my mother have it. It was as if Giselle crawled up inside of me to make that remark. <laughs> I couldn't control it. It was surging through me. Well, it worked. She didn't suspect a thing. As far as she's concerned, you are Giselle. Are you concerned? Of course not. I know who you are. Is everything okay? You sound different. Turns out all those fancy, expensive doctors are wrong. Tess came back and Giselle's prognosis is even worse. Oh no. I'm so sorry to hear that. Are you? I, I, I mean, do you know that even if she survives, she'll have permanent brain damage? Do you remember when we were kids? You went to see that voodoo queen? Yeah, had her conjure up some nasty spell to cast over Giselle. That was a long time ago, Paul. And I regretted it immediately after. Yeah, well, I guess it's still working. I'm happy for you, too. Really am. Paul. I have to go now. He sounded so strange. Not like the man I know. He thought he could cure Giselle and bring you back. I think we should visit Cypress Woods soon. Monsieur and Madame Andreas. Any new developments, Jean? They, uh, checked Ruby into the hospital permanently. He just wallows around all day. We're all really worried about him. Especially my mother. Jean, it's not polite to talk about your host like that. She's just making sure you're okay. I'm fine, Bo. Just accepting my fate. As if you know anything about that. I'm suddenly not. I wanted to check in on you. You should see how small she's getting, Giselle. She is wilting away like a flower. It's decomposing right before my eyes. It's just us, Paul. It's me, Ruby. You don't have to pretend. We're always jealous of the love that Ruby and I had. Paul, I'm not Giselle. You know, jealousy is a terrible thing. Because it rots you away from the inside. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see, Giselle. You'll see. Please stop talking like this. Go. Go. Go, go back to your life of pleasure and your, your dashing husband. Go. Isn't he lucky? Now he doesn't have a wife on her deathbed. I'm sorry we could never be real twins. And we had the greatest gift in the world and we took it for granted. I'll always regret that. This is a pouch of five-fingered grass that Nina Jackson gave to me to ward off evil. You remember her? Papa's favorite cook. I'm bracelet I used to wear for good luck. It's not much, but that's all I have right now. Other than money. I see it now. I'm in your shoes. The world was a great playground to you. And anything that threatened it was to be destroyed. How easy is it to just enjoy life and toss off a calloused remark? It feels powerful. Whereas me, I felt helpless, powerless often. I waited for other people to help me. And now, 
treating people as you do. It makes me feel in charge. And I'm scared. <laughs> because I'm getting really good at it. I'm starting to like it. <laughs> oh, sweetie, do you really think we befriended you because of your personality? It's the yacht, darling. <laughs> and God knows I certainly didn't marry Bo for his brains or good business sense, so clearly we'll never be able to afford one. <sighs> Honey, I'm sorry about the joke about your brains last night. I got carried away with my Giselle act. There were points in the conversation where even I couldn't tell the difference. Where are you going? I want to call Paul. He said if you ever call to just tell you he's unavailable. How is he doing? He's been getting worse and worse, Giselle. He's even started sleeping in your grandma's shack. Saying it reminds him of when he and Ruby were younger. That's so unfair. They were the most perfect couple in the world. Two people living the fantasy romance. Yeah, well, maybe it was a fantasy. Giselle. Bruce, how on earth did you get in? Well, I lived here for years, remember? I know every nook of this place. Well, now that you've found your way in, use those same skills to find your way out. I'm not going anywhere till I get what I deserve. That will was not fair, and I deserve my share of the family fortune, and you're going to give it to me. There's nothing in the world you can say to make me give you even one penny of that money. Wait, Ruby could do something like that. Oh. <laughs> you're Ruby. Bruce, you're drunk. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yes, I do. I know you're up to something. And I'm going to tell the whole world about it unless you give me what I want. Because once I start pulling at threads, something's going to unravel. You're not going to say a word. Because I know enough about all of your back alley deals and the crap you pull when you're the Dumas family fixer to discredit you up and down the state. And if I really need to, I know you and Giselle once messed around while my father was dying. And what's that gonna look like to polite society? A creepy old man making an advance on his sweet little underage future stepdaughter? That's not true. Yes, it is. You've always been inappropriate towards me and Giselle. No. And you can't prove any of that. Well, I bet if I start pulling at threats, something will unravel. That's what I thought. Now get out of my house. I have company coming, and I don't want you here when they arrive. I'm just worried about who I'm becoming. There is power in Giselle's assertiveness that feels good, but it also feels ugly. Well, the fact that you're worried about it tells me you'll never become Giselle. You'll always be that kind-hearted ruby on the inside. Will I, though? Today, with, it felt right. Sometimes, anger is justifiable. You have lived the real truth of that statement. So have you, my friend. Excuse me. Ruby is dead. Ruby is dead? Yes, she... she died this afternoon. Paul is there, holding her hand as she went. Oh my God, Jean, this is awful. Paul has requested that you not bring Pearl to the funeral. If you even bother coming at all. <gasps> They're thinking it's me who died. 
afraid. I just couldn't bear the sadness and anger in Jean's voice. And then they said, if you come at all, of course we're coming to the funeral. We're not monsters. Oh my God. I am going to my own funeral. So sorry for your loss, Madame Giselle. Your sister was a wondrous person. Paul really believes he's burying Ruby? In a way, he is. I saw the sunshine. I miss you. That's my true love. I've never known another like Ruby Lantry. She's gone. She's never coming back, Giselle. It's over. You're talking. I always knew that you would destroy Paul. Ruby. Maybe my husband, Bo and I, could help Paul get back on his feet. Hmm. I'd rather ask the devil himself for help. I just want you to know that I know why my son is so brokenhearted. And I will not sit by and let him suffer without you suffering twice as much. Paul's missing. What? He's gone. Where? I don't know. He just ran off. He was talking crazy about how he couldn't live without Ruby. Where'd he go? We have to stop him. I don't know. I don't know. This way. What do you know about this place? Ruby used to describe it to me in detail. She and Paul used to come here to be together when they were kids. Somehow it's the only thing I ever remember that she said. Have some respect for the dead, Giselle. I'm sorry. That was uncalled for. Shall we? Ruby. Honey, come back! It's okay. 
Are you okay? No. Fair enough. I just wanted to let you know that a special little someone's here and wants to say hello. Oh, thank you, sweet Pearl. I really needed to see her smile today. <laughs> you know, all I ever wanted was for you to have a better life than I had. Baby girl. <laughs> what on earth is it? How dare you do? I'll be down in a minute. As you wish. <sighs> Go back to Daddy Pearl. <sighs> Jean. Hi. What are you doing here? My parents asked me to deliver this news to you in person, Giselle. First, we would prefer if you did not attend Paul's funeral. Second, Paul and Ruby's daughter belongs with her grandpere and grandmare, not her self-centered aunt. So your promises, your obligations are over. You can go back to living your life of pleasure and not worry. Oh, that's okay. I'm sort of getting used to it. And so is Pearl, it seems. She thinks I'm her mama. <laughs> And yet you are not her mother. Mrs. Giselle Andreas, I represent Octavius and Gladys Tate. They have filed a custody lawsuit, and the judge has issued a court order saying that we will take your niece, Pearl Tate, with us back to her grandparents. <laughs> There's been some sort of misunderstanding. I'm afraid not, and I can't leave without the child. And we are prepared to charge you with obstruction if you choose not to cooperate. Ultimately, the courts will decide, but until then, Pearl will be in the custody of her grandparents. What the hell is going on here? They're taking Pearl, Bo. They're taking Pearl. Slow down. They're claiming custody of Pearl. They filed a court order. The lawyer and the police have come to get her. This is what Gladys meant by making Ruby suffer twice as much as Paul. She's seeking vengeance. It'll be all right. Please, don't do this. Mrs. Andreas, don't make this harder or more traumatic than it needs to be. Especially for the child. It's okay, my sweetest Pearl. You're just going on a trip to Grandma and Grandpa's house for a while. They'll take good care of you, and then I will come get you back. Giselle and I switch places, you know, to hell with what everyone thinks. We have to be strategic about this. No. Oh, I am tired of lying. No, I said a long time ago that the most important thing was to live a good life, to be honest and always do the right thing, but look at what I've become. I only recognize myself when I look in my baby's eyes. And I'm gonna start by telling the truth. I switch places with Giselle to be with the man I love. If we can prove that you're Ruby, then Bo can testify to being the father of the child. Of course. And yet you say there are no birth certificates or medical records of your birth or your sister's? I'm afraid not. My sister and I were born in swamp country. No doctors, no hospitals. 
which means you no know, paperwork or birth certificates. I hear there's something called DNA technology, which will be able to clear this up with a simple blood test one day. But we're years away from that. Handwriting sample? Their penmanship's clearly different. That's hardly conclusive. What about the doctor who originally treated Giselle for encephalitis? We can't call on him. I made a deal financially and he disappeared west. Uh-huh, very well. The staff at the ranch or the Dumas mansion? None of them knew what was happening. We were very careful. So the Tates believe that they buried Ruby Tate and there was a death certificate issued in your name? Yes. I can't believe we did so much to convince the world I was Giselle and we did it so well that now no one will believe the truth. This may end up being your word against the Tates. And we'll do our best to tell your story as sympathetically as we can, but this will be assigned to a Bayou court with a Bayou judge. So we will likely be at a significant disadvantage. And prepare for the press to have a field day. Advice, I say you should go over to the Tates and do whatever is necessary to avoid this trial. Mrs. Tate, as one mother to another, I beg if you please let this matter go. I am doing what is best for this baby. That child does not belong with a pair of pathological liars. For better or for worse, your son offered to make a home for Ruby and Pearl. It was for worse. Look at where he is now. I understand that, Mrs. Tate. But hurting another family won't solve anything. In fact, when Paul saw the love between Ruby and I, he agreed to help us have a real shot at being a family. <laughs> if this is about the money, we can sign over anything we might stand to gain from it. You think I'm worried about money? My son is dead. Because of you. Get out of my house. And out of our lives. You put your sister's face on, and you crawled into her skin. Now, let there. Andreas versus Tate, custody trial of Pearl Tate. Counselor, do you have an opening statement? Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to leave that statement for my client, Ms. Ruby Tate. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Please be seated. So you are telling this court under oath that Paul Tate married you, took in someone else's child, provided you and her with an unbelievably lavish lifestyle, and then when you committed adultery right under his nose in Baton Eye, and then he agreed to take in your dying sister, assume the responsibilities of her daily care, lie to his entire family, saying that you were her. And then when she, I mean, you, passed away, he became so distraught that he took his own life. This is the story that you expect us to believe. I, I, no more questions, Your Honor. The court will take a brief. Gladys, tell us about your relationship with Ruby and Paul. I just adored them. Ruby was such a wonderful girl. I was, I was so touched she asked me to um, 
help decorate her and Paul's beautiful home. I can't possibly imagine Paul doing the things they're, they're saying that he did. You know, she said earlier that, that names are just a formality. But I was there when my Paul collapsed with grief, desperately calling out, Ruby, my sweet Ruby, Ruby, as if it would bring her back. I'll never shake the horror that day. Not as long as I live. It was Ruby Landry we buried that day. That is her sister, Giselle. That is not Pearl's mother. Thank you, Gladys. I know that was really hard for you. Your witness. Your Honor, we'd like to request a recess. Very well. I wish I could just tell them I know you, Ruby, because I can see your heart. What are we gonna do? We're gonna keep telling the whole truth. No one can hide from who they are and what they've done in the end. The whole truth. Haven't we already told the truth? Not everybody has. <sighs> Call Octavius Tate. Excuse me? He knows the truth. I'll write down exactly what to ask. Court is back in session. Mr. Polk, are you ready for closing? Uh, yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, we would like to call one more witness if it pleases the court before closing. Please, Your Honor. There's something everyone needs to hear. Uh, we would like to call Octavius Tate to the stand. Well, objection. Process violation. Overruled. I, I want to hear this. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Tate, were you happy when you heard that Paul and Ruby had married? No, I wasn't. You didn't want your son Paul and Ruby Landry to marry? It wasn't simply because you didn't think they made a good couple, was it? There was another reason. Please do what is right, Mr. Tate. Ma'am, do not speak of the witness. Yes. There was another reason. Octavius! I am tired of hiding behind a lie. And I cannot separate another mother from her child. Your Honor, when I was a young man, I was hunting in the bayou and I came across an enchanting young woman. Though I was married to Gladys at the time, I gave in to my desires that night. And as a result, my son Paul was born. Your Honor, I have made a mistake that I have had to live with and cover up all these years. The truth is that enchanting young woman was Ruby's mother. My son, Paul Tate and Ruby Landry were half brother and sister. My wife and I, we kept up the lie for the sake of propriety, but this, this is not proper. Pearl is not 
Paul's daughter. Pearl, no. These things are not for you. I've told you, never touch mommy's stuff. Sorry, mama, they're just so pretty. Come here, sweet love. What do you think? They look like mommy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello, my lovely ladies. Daddy! <gasps> Happy belly, say hi to the boys. Sure you can, sweetie. <gasps> I felt them kick. And family. To fate and family. To fate and family.